Florida woman, Mayara Alejandra Martinez, sued the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, alleging excessive force during her arrest. Martinez was violently taken into custody on April the 27th of 2016. It was her first day of work at the Scores Gentlemen's Club on University Boulevard. She became intoxicated on the job during that first day and was told to leave. When she refused, the police were called. Responding officers tried to take her into custody, but she resisted. They managed to cuff her, but she still didn't cooperate. When one of the officers, Akinyemi Borisade, told Martinez to leave the area, she tried to hit him. Surveillance footage showed Borisade consequently shoving Martinez against the wall. After she appeared to try to kick him, the officer struck her several times in rapid succession while she was still handcuffed. The onslaught knocked the woman out cold. In the wake of the incident, Borisade was arrested for simple battery and fired from the department. In October, he pleaded no contest and was sentenced to the one day he'd already served behind bars. Additionally, he was ordered to have no contact with the victim and fined $655. In the same month, Martinez pleaded guilty to one count of resisting an officer without violence and was sentenced to one year of probation and 50 hours of community service. In July of 2020, the 31-year-old was awarded a $92,500 settlement in the suit against the Sheriff's Office. Today, we've partnered up with Zbiotics, the best product to help you kill the possibility of a rough morning after drinking. With their patented probiotic formula, you'll never have to waste your next day stuck on the couch again, giving you the freedom and peace of mind to enjoy your nights out as you please. How exactly, I hear you ask? Well, Zbiotics targets the main source of what causes a rough day after drinking, acetaldehyde. It's a byproduct of alcohol, and high levels of it are what lead to unpleasant mornings. Zbiotics contains a patented probiotic formula engineered by PhD scientists that releases an enzyme similar to the ones that's found in your liver that breaks down acetaldehyde and helps you feel better the next day. So all you gotta do is drink a bottle before your first alcoholic drink and the probiotics get to work on their own and rest assured, knowing you'll wake up feeling good as new. Zbiotics is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic formula that was created by altering the DNA of natural probiotic bacteria we regularly consume in everyday foods. The formula has been rigorously tested and is FDA compliant for safety. In addition, it's sugar-free, calorie-free and vegan. So, get 15% off your first order of Zbiotics Pro Alcohol Probiotic by clicking on the link in the description below and use TWKY at the checkout. Scan the QR code you see here on your screen or click on the link in the description below to get 15% off your first order of Zbiotic Pre-Alcohol Probiotic and using my code TWKY at checkout. Number 10. Jordan Steinker and Pablo Vasquez. A pair of police officers in Colorado had their careers destroyed as a result of an incredibly reckless decision they made on September the 16th of 2022. The incident unfolded when Sergeant Pablo Vasquez from the Platteville Police Department pulled over 20-year-old Yureni Rios Gonzalez on a rural road near the US Highway 85. Vasquez questioned her about a suspected road rage incident during which the woman had allegedly pointed a gun at another motorist. Officer Jordan Steinker from the Fort Lupton Police Department arrived at the scene after Vasquez had requested backup. Steinker placed Rios Gonzalez in handcuffs and locked her in Vasquez's police SUV, which was parked on railroad tracks. Body camera and dashboard camera footage showed that a freight train was approaching the SUV with its horn 
blaring, but apparently the officers were oblivious to the warning sounds. Moments later, the train smashed into the SUV, dragging it down the tracks with the restrained suspect still inside. Rios Gonzalez suffered a brain injury, nine broken ribs, a broken arm, broken teeth, a fractured sternum, and leg injuries. Fortunately, she survived the terrifying crash. She later pleaded no contest to misdemeanor menacing in connection with the road rage incident and would receive a deferred sentence. In November, the Weld County District Attorney's Office filed charges against Steinker and Vasquez. The former was charged with attempted felony reckless manslaughter and two misdemeanors and the latter was accused of reckless endangerment, obstructing a highway, careless driving and illegal parking. After several internal investigations by the Internal Affairs Department, Vasquez was fired from the Platteville PD. Steinke was also terminated from the force after she was convicted of reckless endangerment and assault. Weld County District Court Judge Timothy Kearns said he had initially planned to sentence the former Fort Lupton policewoman to prison, but changed his mind after both prosecutors and defense attorneys argued for probation. In September of 2023, Kearns sentenced Steinke to 30 months of supervised probation and required her to perform 100 hours of community service. The 29-year-old sobbed through her sentencing and apologized to the victim, saying she'd never intended for another person to be harmed, especially under her watch. The latest updates indicated that Vasquez was still awaiting her trial and that Rios Gonzalez had sued the police agency seeking compensation for the alleged mishandling behavior during the incident. Number 9. Officers from the New Haven Police Department The police chief of the New Haven Police Department in Connecticut recommended that a handful of officers be fired after they'd recklessly dragged a paralyzed suspect who was in their custody and falsely accused him of being intoxicated. On June the 19th of 2022, Richard Randy Cox was arrested on suspicion of illegally possessing a handgun. The 36-year-old was handcuffed and placed in the back of a police van without being secured with a seatbelt. As Cox was being transported, another vehicle abruptly pulled out from a side street, almost causing a collision. Officer Oscar Diaz, who was driving, quickly braked hard to avoid hitting the other vehicle. Meanwhile, a camera from the van's interior showed Cox flying headfirst into the metal divider between the driver's section and the prisoner's area. The man could be heard trying to say, I can't move, I'm going to die like this. He continued to plead as he struggled to make out the words, please, please, please help me. Shortly after, Diaz pulled over and called an ambulance but told paramedics to meet him at the police station. According to officials upon the van's arrival at the station, Officer Diaz, Jocelyn Lavandier, Luis Rivera, Betsy Segui, and Ronald Presley dragged Cox out of the vehicle and tried to make him stand, at which point he collapsed to the floor. The officers then placed him in a wheelchair and brought him to a cell where they put him on the floor. As they waited for the ambulance, officers kept ordering Cox to get up or move. They mocked him for being paralyzed, thinking he was inebriated and ignoring the possibility that he might be seriously injured. The victim was later taken to a medical facility and it was determined that he suffered a fractured neck. He was ultimately left paralyzed from the chest down. Three months later, he sued the five officers and the city of New Haven, claiming $100 million in damages. On November the 28th of 2022, the officers in question turned themselves in at the Connecticut State Police Barracks after they were criminally charged with reckless endangerment and cruelty. They were each released on a $25,000 bond and later pleaded not guilty. Presley retired in January of 2023 but was still facing charges. With the police chief's recommendation, the police commissioners voted in favor of the terminations of Lavandia, Rivera, Diaz and Segui. As of the latest updates, Cox settled his civil suit for $45 million and the charge he was accused of during the arrest had been dropped. Number 8. Melissa Williams 46-year-old Colorado woman Melissa Williams claimed she'd been forced to resign from her job as a police lieutenant in the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office after her colleagues discovered her OnlyFans page. Williams had worked in law enforcement for 28 years and in May of 2020, she began posting her explicit content on the adult platform. 
She said it was a way of spicing up her marital relations with her husband and a means to unwind from her job as an officer. In August of 2021, Melissa discovered that several of her fellow officers had signed up to her page. Shortly after, her salacious photo circulated around the entire force, including jail staff and her superiors. The situation affected Williams's mental health and forced her into therapy, eventually getting recommended not to return to policing. During her time off, a severance package of $30,000 was put together by her lawyer and the sheriff's office. In the wake of her leaving the force, her online fan base soared from 400 to 4,800. Many of those newly established audiences were dozens of police officers who were leaving Williams messages and asking for a discount and free photos. Williams said that some of those who were asking for free content were the same officers who had circulated her photos at the workplace. Number 7. Erica Rivera in August of 2014, 27-year-old officer Erica Rivera from the New York Police Department was fired for a throwback Thursday photo that suggested she once dated a known criminal. Rivera and Danny Perez had dated before the former became a police officer. According to Rivera, she hadn't had any contact with Perez since 2009, after he was arrested for a non-fatal stabbing. In 2012, Rivera posted an Instagram photo of her and Perez apparently to celebrate Throwback Thursday. During that time, she was already an officer assigned to the 52nd Precinct Station House in the Bronx. On August 17th, Perez's new girlfriend reportedly went to the station and complained about the Instagram photo. Shortly after, the inspector at the station called Rivera and questioned her about the matter. He asked her if she knew that Perez was a criminal and started asking if she was having intercourse with him. Rivera told the inspector she hadn't had any contact with Perez for several years. She also told him that the photo had been taken in 2007. She added that he had no right to ask questions about her private life. Rivera was promptly reported to the Internal Affairs Bureau at which point she was investigated. There were instances where she'd be trailed while she was off duty. In the spring of 2013, she was again accused of associating with another criminal named George Mann. NYPD officials questioned Rivera regarding the matter and threatened to fire her if she wouldn't say whether she was intimate with Mann or not. Rivera admitted to dating Mann on and off for three months but claimed she was unaware of his criminal history. After the allegations cost her her career, she filed a $5 million lawsuit against the city for wrongful termination. Nevertheless, there is no record that we could find that shows her ever receiving anything. Number 6. Taylor Salters the athens clark county police department fired officer taylor salters after an investigation determined that he'd intentionally run down and hit a fleeing suspect with his police cruiser police body-worn camera footage showed salters pursuing timmy patman on june the 1st of 2018 in athens georgia the 24-year-old was wanted for an active probation violation and tried to flee on foot Salters initially maneuvered his vehicle in an attempt to block the suspect, but the man dodged. Patman then continued running down the street, at which point Salters hit him with the front right of his police car, causing him to roll up on the hood of the car and subsequently fall to the pavement. Patman was taken into custody after being released from the hospital. In the immediate aftermath, the officer was placed on administrative leave but was fired the next day following an independent investigation. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation and Prosecuting Attorneys Council of Georgia also started looking into the incident and at whether the speedy termination of Salters was rightful. During the course of multiple investigations, Police Chief Scott Freeman was eventually forced to resign in September, effectively for swinging the axe on Salters firing too quickly. The county manager had cited an erosion of confidence from within the police department and community. After the investigation concluded, Salters was exonerated. He then proceeded to sue the city, alleging that the department had rushed to judgment in firing him. In the end, the athens clark County Unified Government agreed to a $250,000 settlement in March of 2019 to avoid continued litigation. Number 5. Michael McMaster 
A viral video caught the moment 30-year-old Georgia man Tyler Lee Canaris was slammed to the ground by a Paulding County Sheriff's deputy as he was being arrested for a crime he didn't commit. Dashcam video of the incident which transpired at around 6 a.m. on March the 4th of 2022 showed Deputy Michael McMaster responding to a report of a man attempting to break into a vehicle at the Evans Mill subdivision in Dallas. McMaster, who was in his early 30s, encountered Canaris, whom he described as matching the description of a suspect breaking into cars. The deputy approached the man and tried to handcuff him after he allegedly refused to comply with commands. I'm not breaking into anyone's cars, Canaris said, right before the deputy grabbed him and forcibly brought him to the ground before being placed under arrest. Canaris was then transported to the hospital for medical evaluation. It was determined that he suffered serious injuries to his right clavicle, a skull fracture, ruptured eardrum, and a concussion. He was later diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury. His medical bills would later accumulate to almost $75,000 worth. It was later officially determined that Canaris was not the person who was breaking into cars, but for some odd reason he was still charged with obstruction of justice, even after everything that had transpired. After Paulding County requested the Georgia Bureau of Investigation to look into the incident, McMaster was relieved of his duties as a deputy. Canaris later filed a complaint for damages against McMaster and the Paulding County Sheriff. His attorneys held a news conference in February of 2023, saying that they were pleased that the sheriff's office had finally taken action and fired the deputy. They also said that the criminal charges against their client should be dropped. They further stated that they'd sent an official demand to the county, urging officials to resolve the civil case they had filed. Number 4. Joe Gutierrez U.S. Army Lieutenant Karen Nazario filed a lawsuit against two police officers after he was pepper sprayed, struck and handcuffed during a traffic stop in Windsor, Virginia. The ordeal took place on the evening of December the 5th of 2020 when Nazario was spotted driving an SUV with an improperly displayed license plate. His car was new at the time and it only had a cardboard temporary plate taped to the inside of the rear window. 24-year-old officer Daniel Crocker from the Windsor Police Department attempted to pull him over using blue lights and sirens. Nazario continued to travel at a low rate of speed and he eventually pulled over near a gas station. Crocker, who was tailing him, had already called for backup. Footage that captured the incident showed Crocker and responding officer Joe Gutierrez pointing handguns at the uniformed soldier as they approached him at the gas station. In the video, the officers could be heard repeatedly shouting at Nazario, commanding him to exit his vehicle. At one point, Gutierrez was heard yelling that Nazario would be fixing to ride the lightning if he didn't get out. Nazario held his hands in the air outside the driver's side window and continually asked, why he was being stopped. When he said he was afraid to get out, Gutierrez told him, you should be. In spite of Nazario's calm demeanor, Gutierrez went on to pepper spray him through the open window. Once Nazario exited the SUV, the officer told him to get on the ground with Gutierrez kneeing Nazario in the leg. Crocker searched the vehicle and realized that no violations were committed by Nazario. They then released him without charge. Following an investigation into the encounter, it was determined that Gutierrez had used excessive force during the traffic stop. The 51-year-old was fired in April of 2021. In the same month, the video of the incident went viral after it was publicly released due to the fact that Nazario had sued the officers seeking $1 million in damages. He was alleging that he'd been illegally searched, assaulted, battered and falsely imprisoned. In January of 2023, a jury in Richmond found Gutierrez liable for assault and awarded Nazario $2,685 in compensatory damages. The jury also awarded him $1,000 in punitive damages for Crocker's illegal search of Nazario's vehicle. Nazario almost immediately requested a new trial, claiming the jury's verdict was against the clear weight of the evidence, among other grounds. His request was rejected by U.S. District Judge Roderick Young, who stated that the jury was at liberty to weigh the credibility of the evidence. However, Young agreed that Nazario was owed compensatory damages in order to vindicate the soldier's rights under the U.S. Constitution. The judge awarded him $1 in nominal damages. 
Number three, Joshua Zabo. In Old Saybrook, Connecticut, a local law enforcement officer was accused of misusing his access to the statewide police information system to obtain the identity of a woman he reportedly wanted to date. Officer Joshua Zabo was working a private duty patrol shift at a local Walmart on November the 25th of 2022 when a woman shopping there caught his attention. When the woman got into her vehicle, the 30-year-old sent a text message to an emergency dispatcher to check the woman's license plate. He told the dispatcher that he was game in for a date. The dispatcher advised Zabo that he'd have to request the information over the radio, so the officer did just that. After getting the woman's name, he looked her up on Instagram. An arrest warrant stated that the radio communication unraveled the date-seeking plot when the fire chief's wife heard the request and recognized the woman's name. When investigators questioned Zabo, he told them that he checked her license plate because the woman was behaving suspiciously at the time. In December, Old Saybrook police charged him with computer crime for illegally accessing the Connecticut Online Law Enforcement Teleprocessing System for personal reasons. Two months later, police commissioners voted unanimously to fire Zabo in connection with the charge he was facing. Subsequent information indicated that Zabo's request for an accelerated rehabilitation program was granted by a judge. It could potentially dismiss his case, providing that he'd stay out of trouble for at least a year. Number 2. James Hinkle On December the 13th of 2022, Officer James Hinkle from the Waterbury Police Department in Connecticut berated a driver he'd accused of trying to run him over. Hinkle had been directing traffic when a woman driving an SUV plowed through an intersection despite being directed to stop by the officer. Police body camera footage showed Hinkle catching up to the SUV and demanding the driver to stop. Pull over, goddammit! Hinkle shouted. Once the woman was in the parking lot, the officer lashed out at her as she profusely apologized. In the video, he could be heard shouting, you're lucky you're not in handcuffs right this second. Throughout the interaction, the driver was interrupted by Hinkle as she tried to explain herself. At one point, the officer told her it wasn't an accident but an act of being irresponsible. Despite Hinkle's conduct, which Waterbury Police Chief Fernando Spagnolo described as unacceptable, the woman continued to apologize. When another officer with the department arrived at the scene, he asked Hinkle if he was hurt to which the enraged officer replied, emotionally. According to Spagnolo, the driver was given a ticket, which was later dropped. Following the incident, an internal affairs investigation determined that Hinkle's actions and behavior were in violation of departmental policies. His employment with the police department was terminated on January the 11th of 2023. When a rest go wrong is coming up immediately after number one, stick around if you've not yet seen that one. Number 1. Michael Oxford A viral TikTok video with millions of views posted in August of 2020 showed how a police officer used a taser to arrest 22-year-old Kindesia Smith in Loganville, Florida. Smith and Itra Thomas had allegedly been involved in an altercation with the neighbor and her child on August the 18th. Police were called to the area by the neighbor who claimed that Thomas had thrown a bottle at her car and threatened her son. The neighbor pointed responding officer Michael Oxford towards a residence where Thomas could be located. Oxford went there and approached a group of women, including Thomas and Smith, who were gathered on the porch. He tried to investigate by speaking with the former, but the latter began yelling at him. The officer warned Smith that she could go to jail for obstructing his investigation. Smith replied saying, I'm not going anywhere. She yelled at the officer telling him that he was on their property. Oxford then told her that she was under arrest causing her to start distancing herself from the officer. At that point, the officer lunged forward and tried to put her under arrest. The woman resisted and Oxford tased her. Smith promptly fell to the ground onto a patch of bushes beside the porch. The officer instructed her to put her hands behind her back several times before saying, I will tase you again. Toward the end of the video, Oxford could be seen forcing Smith to turn over and trying to cuff her as she lay on the ground. Smith was taken to the Gwinnett County Jail on charges of felony obstruction and simple battery against an officer. The following day, she was released after posting a $2,950 bond 
In the immediate aftermath, the Gwinnett County Police Department investigated the incident and subsequently fired the officer. They released a statement saying that even though there had been probable cause to arrest Smith for obstruction of an officer, Oxford didn't meet the department's core values. The entire incident led to a civil rights lawsuit against Oxford and Gwinnett County filed by Smith in May of 2022. Records indicate that the suit was dismissed with prejudice in August of 2023. Number 7. Yesenia Garcia On May the 24th of 2020, the police in Scottsdale, Arizona were called to a parking lot near the Hi-Fi Club while investigating a hit-and-run collision that had transpired less than a mile away. Officers ran into Yesenia Garcia and her boyfriend, who'd returned to the former's vehicle after spending the night at the club to find that its windshield had been smashed. Law enforcement proceeded to make Garcia, whom they now suspected of being involved in the earlier hit and run, the focus of their investigative efforts. They asked her how much alcohol she'd consumed over the course of the evening before eventually taking her into custody for her alleged involvement in the collision. During the ensuing police investigation, it emerged that Garcia had not in fact, been the culprit of the hit and run as her vehicle had been parked in the lot for several hours at the time of the crash. As was captured by the lot's surveillance footage, an unidentified man had jumped onto the woman's car while it was parked, inflicting the damage to its windshield that officers later found suspicious. Garcia's charges were dropped and the body cam video of her arrest subsequently went viral online, seeking further recompense for her wrongful arrest the woman filed a federal suit against the Scottsdale Police Department, allegedly seeking at least $300,000 in damages. Number 6. Maria del Carmen Rendon In the afternoon of October the 15th of 2021, the police in Wake Forest, North Carolina, received reports of an assault by strangulation involving a 15-year-old suspect and a 14-year-old female victim. Officers subsequently conducted a traffic stop along the 200 block of Plot Hound Lane in order to investigate the allegations. The male suspect, a passenger in the car that was pulled over, reportedly refused to cooperate with law enforcement. The vehicle's driver, identified as 35-year-old Maria del Carmen Rendon, eventually fled the scene with the teen as well as three other juveniles. The woman narrowly avoided striking an officer as she sped away, then drove through a stop sign and nearly crashed into an oncoming tractor trailer. Rendon was pulled over again a short time later, at which point the police told her multiple times to exit the vehicle. She refused to comply, however, prompting one of the officers to inform her that they'd be forced to break the car's window to arrest her if she continued her disobedience. Unfazed by the impending consequences of her non-compliance, Rendon once more refused to step out of the vehicle. The officer thus shattered the driver's side window with his baton and the woman was forcefully removed from the car. She was taken into custody and charged with resist, delay and obstruct, contributing to the delinquency of a minor and driving while license revoked as well as careless and reckless driving. In the aftermath, a video of the arrest was posted to TikTok, leading many to criticize law enforcement's display of force during their interaction with Rendon. A police department press release defended the actions of the officers involved, stating that they were forced to react to a situation that was entirely avoidable. Number 5. LaDonna June Paris Members of the Tulsa Police Department in Oklahoma were called to the city's Habitat for Humanity Restore on October the 25th of 2021. The responding officers were told by an emergency medical service worker that a bipolar woman had locked herself in the bathroom while allegedly in the midst of a manic episode. When law enforcement attempted to make contact with the individual, identified as 70-year-old LaDonna June Paris, from outside the restroom door, they immediately adopted a harsh, threatening tone, asking her, do you want to get tased? Paris pleaded with them not to harm her, saying, get away from me, to which officer Ronnie Carosia responded by laughing and telling her colleagues, I love my job, as Carosia and another officer awaited the arrival of a third to break down the door. The former was captured on body cam footage expressing her gleeful anticipation 
for them to pound the door open and pepper spray Paris. That's exactly what happened a short time later when the officers rushed inside the bathroom and tackled Paris to the ground, inflicting a bloody gash on the left side of her face. The woman fought back as she was taken into custody on charges of attempted arson, assault and battery upon a police officer, resisting an officer, trespassing and cruelty to animals. In the aftermath, the general public levied heavy criticism against the Tulsa officers involved in Paris's arrest, whose behavior was deemed overly aggressive and unprofessional. Paris's criminal charges were eventually dropped by a judge who cited her unstable mental status as the reasoning for the case's dismissal. Number 4. Angel Goose In August of 2022, controversial body cam footage depicting the arrest of California-based actress Angel Goose was released to the public by the Atlanta Police Department in Georgia. According to subsequent reports on the matter, 32-year-old Goose and a friend had been hanging out at a park when a masked police officer suddenly pulled up to the scene in a patrol car and asked the women for their IDs. He proceeded to give them each a citation to sign but neglected to specify what their alleged violation actually was. Goose then asked the officer for his name and badge number to which he responded with furious indignation. The interaction quickly escalated and the policeman used considerable force in his subsequent efforts to place Goose under arrest for refusing to sign a citation. In the wake of the incident, the woman filed a civil lawsuit against the Atlanta Police Department, alleging excessive force by the officer involved. The department defended the officer's behavior, indicating that he did not commit any violations during his run-in with Goose. The body cam video went viral upon its release on social media, with many siding with the woman and supporting her decision to issue a legal challenge against Atlanta police. Number 3. Samantha Glass Arizona police were called to the apartment complex at 230 East Civic Center Drive in Gilbert after receiving reports about a woman allegedly trying to break into a pickup truck. Upon his arrival, Gilbert police officer Christopher Robinson encountered 36-year-old Samantha Glass, who was sitting outside the unit that reportedly belonged to her ex-husband. Robinson asked the woman why she'd been attempting to gain access to a locked truck, which was also her ex-husband's. Glass, who it would later emerge was intoxicated at the time, appeared confused by the officer's inquiry and allegedly struggled to provide relevant answers to his questions throughout their ensuing interaction. When Glass refused to disclose her last name, Robinson informed her that she was under arrest for attempted vehicular burglary. The woman resisted and the officer then forced her to the ground face first, causing her to cry out in pain. Blood began to pool underneath her head as other officers arrived at the scene. In the immediate aftermath, Glass was charged with interfering with a police officer and extreme DUI. She was eventually convicted of both counts and consequently ordered to pay a fine. Glass reportedly suffered a mild traumatic brain injury during her altercation with Officer Robinson and thus filed a federal lawsuit against the latter, accusing him of using excessive force to detain her. Number 2. Randall Worcester A video of three Arkansas law enforcement officers violently arresting a 27-year-old man went viral in the late summer of 2022. The incident reportedly occurred outside of a convenience store in Mulberry, a city located roughly 140 miles northwest of Little Rock. It was subsequently reported that on the 21st of August, two Crawford County Sheriff's deputies and one Mulberry police officer responded to the store after receiving reports of a man making unspecified threats. As the suspect, named as Randall Worcester, was being detained, he was brutally beaten by the officers, as was captured by cell phone video taken by a nearby witness. One of the deputies punched Worcester with a clenched fist, as another dug his knee into him, all while the third officer held the man down on the ground. In the aftermath of the altercation, Worcester was taken to a hospital for treatment before being released and booked into the Van Buren County Jail on charges of second-degree battery and resisting arrest, as well as making threats. Later on the day of the arrest, Crawford County authorities indicated that they'd be launching an investigation into the matter and that each of the officers involved had been suspended pending the results of that investigation. 
Number 1. 2022 Berlin Arrest A pair of police officers from Germany were publicly lambasted after video of an alarming arrest surfaced online in September 2022. The viral recording showed the officers wrestling an unnamed man to the ground after responding to his Berlin residence on September the 9th. They'd reportedly been pursuing an arrest warrant against a homeowner for fraudulently receiving government benefits. When the officers initially attempted to take him into custody, the man resisted, which they responded to by taking him to the ground and placing him in handcuffs. The man's wife and children watched in horror as law enforcement used considerable force to restrain him on the floor. They also reportedly unleashed a series of racially charged slurs and insults while telling the immigrant family, you are here in our country, you have to behave according to our laws. The woman at one point attempted to pry her husband free but was rebuked by one of the officers who threatened to take her to prison if she touched him again. In the incident's aftermath, Berlin police opened an official probe into the conduct of the officers who were accused of using excessive force and xenophobic insults during the course of the arrest. As of the case's latest updates, the investigation was still ongoing. Thanks for watching. Would you let yourself get pepper spray for $500? Let us know in the comments section below.